Hello, I'm Ann Kobayashi, and today I'm going to be talking about more books I bought. This is actually an absurd amount of books that I bought, considering the fact that I actively tried not to buy books. But again, the library was selling books for 50 cents. I bought a new Hobbit book, because again, it was 50 cents, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I don't even think I need to characterize that, but sometimes I feel like some books are so over-present that people actually don't know what they are. Yeah, there's some books that people are like, you should know what these are, and I'm like, do I though? The Hobbit is about Bilbo Baggins who goes on an adventure and fights a dragon and does a bunch of other really cool stuff and kind of sets up Lord of the Rings. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes, I know, it's also right there. However, see, I decided last year that I would be a nice daughter and return the stolen copies of the Narnian series that I've had from my parents since I was like eight, I stole them. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Nordell. I'm really excited for the book. All I know is it's a book, and Jonathan Strange doesn't appear till halfway, and he's like the primary person on the thing, which makes me really curious. I feel like I should have read a description first. The year is 1806. England is bell guarded by a long war with Napoleon, and the centuries have passed since practical magicians faded into the nation's past, but scholars of this glorious history discover that one remained, the reclusive Mr. Norrell, whose displays of magic send a thrill through the country. Proceeding to London, he raises a beautiful woman from the dead, and summons an army of ghostly ships to terrify the French. Yet the cautious, fussy Norrell is challenged by the emergence of another magician, the brilliant novice, Jonathan Strange, young, handsome, and daring. Strange is a very antithesis of Norrell. So begins the dangerous battle between these two great men, which overwhelms that between England and France, and their own obsessions and secret dabblings with the dark arts are going to cause more trouble than they imagine. Wow. I really should have read that before, because like all I saw was this book and I picked it up, but... It sounds incredible. Wow. I really wish I had time to just read it all at the time. Look, the Son of Neptune. I have never owned the Son of Neptune before this. So I was really excited when I found that thrift store. So my story of Rick Riordan is I actually read The Lost Hero, the first book in his second series, before reading Percy Jackson. And this was the first book that I actually read in order. It's about this boy who has amnesia and discovers that he's a demigod but he's a demigod from the wrong set of gods. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I adored this book. It isn't my favorite Marissa Meyer, and maybe I'm biased and would like it, like it less if it wasn't. The ending is extraordinary. Parts of Kath really destroy me and frustrate me, but the overarching story, that of her becoming the Queen of Hearts, is a great story. Wonderland its world building is incredible. Integration of myths is amazing. This is actually, I believe, the very first book that I finished while being a booktuber, so it also will have a special place in my heart. This covers Catherine's Descents into Darkness. And then this one, I Died Laughing. I got this whole trilogy for 50 cents, and it's the Bromeliad trilogy? Terry Pratchett. Okay, I saw Terry Pratchett and I was like, I know this guy is like a father of fantasy, modern fantasy. It is about gnomes and learning about the outside world. There's a world outside of the store. It is just amazing. It sounds like the greatest satire ever. I'm just gonna read it to my nephew and also my roommate. I was like, please, can we just have times would I read this to you because it sounds hilarious because I read her the synopsis and she died of laughter. Irish mythology. This is beautiful. Irish mythology is like really underappreciated. It is sounds amazing and I've definitely heard about some of the myths but I've never read them like I have with Greek, Roman, Norse mythology so I'm really excited and whenever I try to research it online there's not as much resource about it. Bernard Cornwell's the Last Kingdom. I adore the series. I can't wait. I just found out that the third season's coming out. I just watch this show and I go, 
oh my goodness, I love storytelling. It is that incredible. I did not enjoy the book as much, but it did go more into it, and I do want to continue if I ever can find other copies. Sadly, my library only had the first one. This one is probably the strangest one to talk about on here, and it's Why David Sometimes Wins by Marshall Gans, and it is about the Mexican migrant workers and them fighting for rights in California in the 1960s and 70s. And yeah, it's by someone who actually lived through it, and it's talking about like David and Goliath, that's the illusion that sometimes the little guys can win. And I'm really interested to learn more about it. Canadian style book way up there that I decided I was not going to pull from under all of its other books. But it's just um, a book giving information about Canadian stuff and literature and references because I find that even though I know many of it, I can't find conclusive records of what Canada and Canadian things do versus British things because it, we don't always follow the same grammatical and everything that British people do, but it's always only British or American. So having a Canadian one was really helpful. I also found this for 50 cents, which is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I read this book in spring, summer, I can't remember, and it was incredible. There's a rant somewhere of me talking about it, and just socialism and talking about oppression and rights and my brain's too tired to even comprehend how amazing this book is. And this book, Ilya's Grace by Margaret Atwood, this is my free book. My roommate was like, I'm getting rid of this book and I was like, heck yes, please give it to me. It's by Margaret Atwood and it's a classic and I want to read it. It is Agatha Christie, it's a book, it's Dead Man's Folly and Elephants Can Remember. And it's two books by her and it's a really old version from my library that they gave me for 50 cents. Like, what? And I can't wait to read it. I have read two Agatha Christie books this year and absolutely loved them and adored them. And one of them I ended up screaming. That was A Murder on the Orient Express. And, and there was none. Just gave me chills the whole time. So I can't wait to read more of her books. And actually, this is the first one I've owned. Anne of the Island. This is the last book to conclude my Anne of Green Gables series that I own. And I'm really excited. It was one of the ones I really enjoyed when I read it for the first time. And considering the fact that I am in college now, I feel like I will be able to relate to it a heck of a lot more than I did when I was 11. It covers her college years and her finding her identity because Anne was born in Nova Scotia and then she moves when she's 11 to Prince Edward Island and finds her family here and it's her actually being like, no, I'm actually Anne from the island, I'm not Anne from here. And finding that even though she's lived more time in Nova Scotia, she's actually more part of who she was when she was a teenager. It's all about identity and stuff from what I remember. And lots of walks in graveyards, which is where my desire to live and walk in graveyards... I don't live, sorry. I lived beside a graveyard for three years and I still spend a lot of time walking and riding in graveyards. Yeah. Ella uh, Montgomery did this to me. It's her fault. I hope that you enjoyed this. Tell me your favorite book that you read and great times. I never really know how to end these things. Feel free to subscribe and comment and hit the bell icon if you really want to be like my stalker and watch things immediately. Anyways, happy reading and writing and have an amazing life. Goodbye.